Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you guys some sensible points of view that make absolutely a lot of sense. Because you know, uh, a lot of what we see in today's society makes no damn sense. I mean, there are times when I'm driving down the street and I see someone trying to cross the street in particular of, uh, you know, a specific descent and uh, they could hardly make it across the street. I saw one guy holding a cup of tea or something to drink. It was on one cold morning, had his book bag in the other hand and was at odds on whether to take another step to pull up his pants or to adjust the bag that he was carrying with his books because his his pants were damn near falling right off his, his waist. And you know what I'm talking about. It just makes us all look a fool, a real damn fool. And I, 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 you know, there are times where I think of just stopping the car, jumping out, you know, probably if I run up on him, I'd get shot. But you know, the message is so important. I'd want to say to that person, hey man, do you understand that the way you dress and the way you carry yourself is exactly in direct, you know, proportion to the success that you can achieve in your life? So if you dress like shit, the success you, you, you attain is going to be shit, if any. And I've always wanted to say that, but you know what? <laughs> Cat don't want to get shot, you know what I mean? But I've thought of, of doing it many a times. And you know, it's not about having a heart, it's about being smart. I've got two kids, an 18-year-old and a 13-year-old, beautiful kids. And you know what? I have a reason not to be as tough as I know I can be because I'm not doing it just for me. You know, but uh, some other things that I've seen that absolutely make no damn sense is people devaluing their own self-worth. I mean, if you think about this, right, if you were to walk inside of a room and there was a table in that room and you had some fruits on it, you had one stack of fruits that were, look, they, they looked like they were just picked off a tree fresh from, 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 from the garden versus another stack of fruits where you can see that someone took their pen, their marker, their paintbrush, and they painted and drew and, and, and put all kinds of designs, their zodiac, their mama date of birth, their daddy date of death, and all that kind of stuff. All these things, they drew a dragon, they drew a snake on the fruits. Would you feel comfortable walking over to those fruits, picking them up and eating them? Be honest, because I sure damn sure would not. Okay, I'd rather take something that has the appearance of not having been touched or tampered with. Well, you know what I'm saying, guys? That's the same thing with some of these women that I see tattooed to hell. You know, I don't get it. Do you understand the most beautiful thing to a man is not a flower? I know to, to most women, a flower is the most beautiful thing to them. But to a man, the most beautiful thing is a woman's body. That's our flower. Not yours, ours. Okay, that is something that above all is something that we, we, we try to attain the very best. I mean, you can have a Learjet, you can have your own building, your own corporation, your own company, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you want to go home to that special woman. And I'm only going to address women. You know, People that have these alternate lifestyles, you know what? I don't take no part of it, and I try to stay away from it, okay? I'm, a, I'm addressing normal heterosexual people right now, okay? So when a man sees his woman's body, his mind goes crazy. It's unlimited what his mind will encourage him uh, to, to, to achieve outside of that, that, that relationship in his business life, in his family life, in his, you know, uh, intellectual life. He's motivated to do so much more. Why? Because when you have a blank canvas, your imagination can take you anywhere. The moment you put a mark, a scratch, a line, a dot on that canvas, you are, not, you are now limited to what your imagination will allow you to do and how far it can take. you can take it. You know, that's because you've already set conditions by putting that mark on there. So if you wanted to draw a circle because you put that line, you can no longer draw a, a, a pure circle. You have this blemish in there. Same thing with a woman's body that's all tattooed to hell. 
Who wants that? Would you want to have someone give you some flowers? Maybe you like roses or maybe you like, you know, bird of paradise flowers, but they took the liberty to draw all different kinds of nonsensical things on the petals. Would that be beautiful to you? I know you got some crazies out there going to say, oh yeah, I would love that. Well, you know, not the normal people. I ain't talking to y'all crazies. I'm talking to the normal people. They want something pure, untouched, something that is absolutely a, a representation of natural beauty, creator's beauty, one that you can't touch and you can't improve upon it. Because if something is truly perfect, you cannot improve upon it. And you know what? If you like fruits, for example, you might like oranges, pears, pineapples, whatever you may like. Every one of those fruits is perfect, and I'll prove it to you. When you eat a pineapple, you don't eat the skin, do you? Does that make the pineapple imperfect? No, you can't eat the trash, but the trash is a part of the perfection. Same thing with an apple. You don't eat the core and the seeds, do you? Does it make the apple imperfect? The stem, the seed, the core, it's all a part of the perfection. Same thing when you have, let's say, for example, a grapefruit. If you try to eat that skin, you'd probably get some kind of rash on your face because you can't eat the skin, the rind, and so forth. However, does that make the grapefruit imperfect? No, it does not. That skin, the rind, is a part of the perfection. So therefore, every one of you guys out there was created perfect. Whether you fail to realize that or not, that's your own problem. That's your own issue. You have to search yourself intellectually to figure that one out. But if you if you sought to add something to improve upon you, you never accepted the fact that you were perfect. You never accepted that. I've always accepted that. Because you know what? All my flaws, all the things that I don't get right but keep trying to get right, they're a part of my perfection. You get what I'm trying to show you? So therefore, if you think by putting on your mama's date of birth, your daddy's date of death, your children's footprints, and all that stuff improves upon you, dead wrong. Dead wrong. You know why? Because when you put those things on your body, you're not trying to make your body a memorial. You're trying to make your body a monument. Monuments are incapable of feeling, of love, of warmth. Those things are stone or granite or, you know, some inanimate object. You know, they're not capable of emotion and love and, 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 and laughter and smiles. They're not capable of that. Why would you, you know, degrade yourself to becoming a monument, a rock, a stone, something cold, something that has no life within it? Why would you want to do that? Rather than embracing whatever it is that, you know, prompted you to put this person's name or that person's, you know, date of birth or whatever, date of death, why not, you know, do something with your life or within your life that will show that person your appreciation of them or if they've passed? And if they were to come back, for example, if there was such a way to come back and see what you're doing, they'd come back and see you with a tattoo of a horse on you. This person loved horses now, mind you, right? Or would that person rather, if they could, come back and see that you've opened up a hospital or some kind of adoption agencies, uh, or agency for horses that are no longer wanted after they've raced, you know, their thoroughbred lives, you know, and they're considered to be, you know, dog food. Rather than having them crushed, you know, in some meat grinder, you can have where you set up an agency that can adopt them or, or a petting zoo for these retired horses and things like that. Would that person feel more appreciation for having been a part of your life, seeing that, or seeing you walking around with some dumb tattoo of, of a horse on your arm? You know, and, and exposing them with their name, their date of birth and all that stuff where people can comment. It doesn't necessarily have to be positive or negative. But the, 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 the mere point that you give that person something to comment about. You hadn't protected this person. This person wasn't endeared in your heart where no one can touch that person. They're secure and shielded from any ridicule, any comment, any negative or derogatory statement because you endeared them here. And you also endeared them in your actions that shows your appreciation for having been a part of that person's life, whether they're alive or dead. That is how you add value. Everything else is just being, you know, absolutely out of focus with what's really important. You know, I'm going to have a part two of this because I don't want to continue on and, and have you guys feel all beat up, you know, until we talk again, y'all. Peace.